everyone, welcome back to Dreamspace TV here in One Microsoft Place in Dublin. This is episode six, where we hope to bring everything together from the last five episodes. So let's look at what's ahead of us. So in today's episode, we're going to start off by looking at the extension challenge from our previous episode. And then we're going to recap over all the concepts we learned in episode one to five. And finally, we're going to learn the steps involved in design thinking. So Amanda, now before we do that, maybe we'd look at our solution for the last episode's challenge. Yeah, sounds good. So with the last episode, we looked at a challenge that would combine everything we had done up to that point. So remember in the last episode, we did a step counter and then we also did a countdown timer. And what I asked you to do was combine the two of them together into one function that we could call upon under one input. Now that was pretty tricky. I did mention that there could be a few bits in it and not to kind of be uh, dismayed if it wasn't working for you and if you had to go back to blocks, go for it. Um, or you might not got it working at all and that's absolutely fine. I was at this for actually quite a while. Neve was near me at the time and I was like, oh, this will work, then it didn't work, then I tried it again and it didn't work again. So um, don't worry at all. What I'll do is I'm going to bring you down through the solution now. This is the final bit of coding we are going to look at. So hopefully it will just tie together lots of stuff we've learned so so far and set you on a good path then to design your own solutions after this. So I'm going to go into a new project just for this and I'm just going to say uh, episode ep5 solution, just create my project and you might have your solutions opened up and you potentially might have done them different to me, right you're going to see I do, which is no problem if it works it works, there's normally multiple ways to get a program to do something so that's absolutely fine if it is different so mine is just one possible way that we could have looked at this all right so I'm going to go into python as always everyone and I'm going to just clear away whatever comes up and start from the beginning so I did ask you to create one function under one input. So the first thing I'll do is um, I'll just pick out the input that I was going to use. So I decided with mine that I was going to use a button A input so that when I pressed A, the countdown timer began and then I had to see how many steps I got within that time. That was, remember, that was the whole point of this. It was to encourage someone to be active and kind of look at our good health and well-being goal. All right, so just comment, I'm going to say uh, button A to call my function and I'm going to come down and do input on, oh, on button pressed. Okay, and again, it brings in our preloaded things. Now I'm going to change uh, the name of this to uh, step, oh, step challenge that's the whole point of this. I want this to be something that people are enthusiastic about and they're like, oh, I have this amount of time to get this many steps and maybe they do high knees or they do fast feet or something and they see how accurate their micro bit is. But the whole point is there's a bit of a challenge element to this. Maybe you can compete against other people and stuff, okay? Um, because I've changed my function name here, I need to make sure that when I call on it, we change it here as well. So I'm going to do that here too, just make sure they line up. And obviously I have no code here yet, but I'm going to do that now. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is to actually decide on uh, two things. We're going to have to come up with our two variables for this, bearing in mind what we looked at the last day, which if you remember, Neve, we had steps and time, time were the two things. So I'm going to just say uh, challenge steps is my variable, is going to start at zero. And then the challenge time is going to start at... I don't know, we'll maybe say 10, 10, just out of interest. So again, you could change this up. We're going to go with 10, okay? Okay. Now, like the last time, we want to use a while loop. So a loop that continuously runs until it basically would no longer make sense anymore, right? So if we do our while loop like before, it's going to be while challenge time Actually, and I should be doing camel case if I'm right here. I should be putting a capital T there. So if I change it there, I need to change it here. Okay, while challenge time is greater than zero, colon, and we're going to come down. Okay. Also, what we want to do here now is do what we did the last day. So remember, we want, obviously, the time is going to start at 10. When it's greater than zero, we want it to pause for one second and then take... Uh, 
one away from the challenge time. So that take that one second away. So let's add the pause first of all. So we are going to do our basic dot uh, pause. Yep, yeah, there we go. And we're just going to make sure that this is one second. Okay. Happy enough. Is that all right, Looks Neve? good. Looks all right. Yeah. Um, again, once the one second has passed, we are then going to take one from our challenge time. So challenge time is going to be minus equal one. Okay, remember that's, now you could remember right, challenge time equals challenge time minus one, but that's going to be much longer. So this is the quicker way of doing that one there. Okay, now this is where I encountered my first challenge, right, when I was, when I was trying to figure out a solution for this. I got to here and I think I was happy enough that I could get time to work. So even if we test this now, let's see if we have time working. Ah, it is working, but we haven't said to show us, okay? So we might want to just check that that's working. I might just put in a show uh, number and say challenge time. Now I might not leave this in, I'm just gonna get this to test, just to double check I'm on the right track because we are gonna to have to add more code. So let's see, there we go. Eight. So it is counting down. So we're, we're okay with this. I'm happy enough, I'm gonna hit stop there. I'm happy enough that roughly we're on the right track. So where I encountered my first issue was, I wanted that every time we hit A, that the micro bit would also count steps. And if you remember the last time, we counted steps on shake. Now, on shake is an input. I can't actually use that within here at the moment, okay? But shake, if you think about it, let me grab my micro bit here. Shake is just a movement of the micro bit. So what we looked at before, back in episode two, was that um, with the polar bear, remember? was yeah. that the movement could actually be counted by acceleration. So this is where I had to kind of do a bit of a work around. I was encountering an issue where I had on shake and I got really confused, <laughs> it wouldn't work. So um, I was like, okay, let's, let's peel it back a bit. Let's think about this. So acceleration will work. So I'm going to say that obviously when challenge time is greater than zero, that's great. It will count down. But the other thing I wanted to do is while it's counting down within the while loop, if input and its acceleration on dimension x which is fine so basically this this movement here if that input is greater than zero uh, we're going to add one to our challenge steps okay challenge steps plus one Okay, and then that's gonna add to our variable. So remember, it's gonna start at zero here, but then if there's an input greater than zero, it's gonna add one. But remember, it could go either way. Yeah. So it could go the minus x or greater than x. So uh, we need to come down again, and we need to say, and you know what I might do here, everyone? I might just literally copy and paste this. So I have control C, control V. Oh. We don't want that to be indented that much. Okay, so elif, all right, input acceleration dimension x is less than zero. It's also going to, so either way, it's going to add one to our steps if it moves, okay? So that's kind of as far as I got to there. So then it was the next part. So again, we do want to make sure that as it counts down, it's going to count our challenge steps. And we don't need to necessarily see that till the end. end. So if you remember, what we did as part of our counting down of our time was at the very end, we came out here and we said, if challenge time is equal to zero. And if you remember, what we said was, uh, I think we said print time is up or show string time is up. So basic dot show string, let me see, times up was the first thing when we got to zero. But the other thing we can do here is say basic dot show us the number of steps. Okay. So let's check this out. Now, actually, I did take out, did I take out my time? Because I need to see the time as well. So sorry, I will add back in my 
show, uh, da, da, da. Yeah, show number time, challenge time as well. Sorry, I forgot that part. Okay, so let's just read back through it really quickly. So our function is challenge steps is the variable will have zero. Challenge time, the variable will have 10. When the time is greater than zero, it's going to pause for a second. It's going to take away one and then it's going to show us the number and it's going to keep doing that in the loop, remember, until it's not greater than zero anymore. The other thing it's going to take track of when it's in the loop is that if there is movement of any sort on the x-axis, so if acceleration moves, then the steps, challenge steps will increase by one as well. And at the very end, when the time is up at zero, we're going to see time is up and we're going to see the number of, aha, I have a bug. I don't know if you have spotted this, but in here, it says steps, and that is not the name of my variable. Challenge steps. Yeah, challenge. Step challenge. Uh, no, challenge steps. Yeah, that's my variable there. And there we go. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's test this out. I've got to come in here. I'm going to click on A. So it's counting down, and I'm going to move one, two. There's a couple of movements there. So I'm just going to keep moving around here to see does it pick up these motions. It's a lot of steps. <laughs> we'll see. And it's one, and sure, we should see time is up first. And now let's see what number it gives us. It should be the amount of movements I did there. All going well. After this, nine, it said. So Very I don't good. know if that was nine, but roughly there was, it's after picking up definitely that there was some movements across there. So I understand if you didn't get that one, um, but I'm at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if people did because uh, students always blow me away with how good. They might have a different way of doing it as well. That is absolutely no problem. But that is our final um, look at some coding. So we've covered off make code with visual programming. We've covered make code with Python programming, all within the micro bit now. And remember, we do have an end goal that we want you to work towards with this. But now will be a good time to pause. And on a sheet of paper, divide it up into two columns, micro bit and coding. And in the microbit column, write down everything you know now about the microbit itself. And in the coding column, write down everything you now know about coding. So you might have come up with different parts of the microbit and different coding elements that we've covered, but I'm going to take us through what elements of the microbit you might have picked up on. So the first thing we looked at were inputs, and I suppose inputs are how the microbit takes in information. So we used our buttons, our movements, so on shake, and if yeah. you want to tilt the microbit. We didn't come across pins, Amanda, but would you like to explain mm. what pins are? Yeah, so at the base of the microbit, now again, you might not have one of the physical microbits, which is no problem, but you'd see them on the simulator as well, just the golden area at the bottom. And if you did have the physical one, what we can do is we can code these um, to allow the flow of electric current, for example. So if you had these crocodile clip leads, which I know um, they use in the T4 subjects and in and science and so on, um, you could hook it up to like the likes of an LED light um, and you could make a circuit from the microbit to that. So that's just one way of doing it. You could also hook up to speakers to hear the music we do. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we also looked at sensors. So we looked at temperature, we looked at light sensors, but we, we never covered compass, but it's also an inbuilt sensor. There's yeah. also LED lights, which we looked at as well. The Bluetooth antenna when we were covering radio and our polar bear tracker. And we also included music in that. Yeah. So Amanda, you might take us through the coding elements. Yeah, definitely. So that was all the stuff we thought, right, well, that's very specific to the microbit. But if we're thinking in coding terms, it doesn't matter whether you're on microbit, make code, or you're on a different coding platform. Um, these are things you might come across in no matter where you were. So we talked about sequences, so the order of your instructions and making sure that it's in the correct order for your program to run properly. Or if you remember, I changed the sequence just because I didn't like the way something was playing out. So it could be just from a design point of view, you're not really mad on it. Um, we did input process and output, which Neve brought us through in episode one where we talked about taking information in, what we do with the information, and then what happens at the end. In the case of the microbit, it's really obvious because a lot of the time the output is up on the screen. Um, we talked about loops and the two types of loops, the for loop and the while loop. We have covered string and numbers, 
And within numbers, when we definitely, when we got into Python anyway, we were talking about different types of numbers. Integer, if you remember, was one of the ones we talked about. We also looked at operations with numbers. So multiplying, dividing, I don't know, modulus, subtraction, lots of stuff there within numbers. Take a breath, because that's lots. <laughs> uh, the next one is uh, variable. So we did, we covered off the idea of variables. So things we create to store information, and update as we go. The latest example being our timer and our steps. Conditions are if then else statements to execute code at certain situations. Our functions, which hopefully you've seen now are very, very evident across programming and very, very handy that we create and then call upon when we need them. Commenting, which hopefully more so you can comment actually on the blocks. We just didn't have to really do it. You can actually right click on a block and comment, but it's more used in um, the text based language space. Um, and with Python, remember, we use the hash symbol. So we really want you to remember all of these things, whether you've written them down or even if you want to jot down some things we have here, because when we look at what we did with microbit and what we did with coding, that's going to be really important now, isn't it, Neve? As yeah. we go to design your own solution with the microbit, potentially to enter the do your bit challenge. So let's go and have a look here at something we think could be very useful that we use all the time in Microsoft. Um, it's called design thinking. It's not just here, tons of companies use this approach. And design thinking is basically normally broken into five stages. Um, although the word stages might be misleading because you don't just go one after the other. They often are like cyclical, so you might loop, circle back to one. Um, and it's a continuous process really when we're designing different solutions for different problems. A nice way to maybe think about this would be to look back on something we talked about in one of our last few episodes. We talked about the app Seeing AI. We demoed it, actually. Um, and if we think about Seeing AI, Neve, we could definitely apply how they potentially could have used these stages to design that. Exactly. So what they do in the design thinking stages is they focus on the human aspect. So they start off with empathy and they look at the user, so someone who is visually impaired in terms of seeing AI app, and think, well, what do we need to focus on? What does this app need to include? Yeah. And then they move on to their define stage where they basically narrow it down based on the research they conducted maybe through interviews in the empathy stage. And then they come up with their brainstorm in the ID8 stage. So they come up with their different solutions and then they'll test that out. So in the prototype stage, before they get to the testing, they'll pick a particular solution to work on. Mm. And then they'll test it out on the group of people who may be visually impaired to see if it enhances their needs or if they yeah. maybe need to go back and do something else. So as you said, it's it's a process that they can go back in stages. So if they notice that there's something left out or something missing, they can go back and include it in a prototype and retest it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And with something like CNAI, um, it's actually the Microsoft Research Group that are doing that. So they're always going back and going back over it again. And they actually make sure that they involve the users at all stages. So I do know for CNAI, um, there's a Microsoft employee who's visually impaired and she was involved from the very er early stages of that to inform the process. Um, but maybe you wouldn't be able to do that. You might have to do, as you said, research, interviews, different things like that too. So we want to break this down for you. That's just one example of that, but we want to break it down maybe into the different stages. And what we'd like you to do for this is to bear in mind the do your bit challenge, which we've been talking about over the last few episodes, and to think about the two goals in particular that this year's challenge is focused on. So they want a solution that is developed either to look at good health and well-being, goal three, or climate action, which is goal 13. So now will be a good time to pause and pick one of those goals so that we can keep moving from there with our design thinking solution. Okay, so hopefully you've picked one of these, all right? So good health and well-being and climate action. Obviously, you can change your mind after this episode. It's just to maybe have a focus point. So if we look back at our five stages, as Neve mentioned, empathy is when we put ourselves in other people's shoes and we try and really understand maybe the challenges that are faced, 
that could work maybe well for good health and well-being but maybe for something like climate action it might not be a person you're trying to help it could be a situation or something in the environment but either way it's you trying to really understand the human aspect of it okay and how you could potentially help and um, Satya Nadella is our CEO in Microsoft and this is a quote where he said empathy makes you uh, a better innovator so the idea would be that if you're designing a solution for someone, if you've made sure to think about that solution and how it would help someone or help a situation, it's gonna be a lot more effective. So that's something we want you to keep in mind. And the empathy stage can be conducted in different ways. So I know I read a book before and it was actually a group of children in primary school were doing design thinking, believe it or not. You're in secondary school, but primary school children were doing it. And what they were doing was they were conducting interviews. Like that's just one easy way of really putting yourself in the situation of someone. Another thing you could do, Neve, could be what? What else could you do? You could research up on maybe technologies that those groups are looking for in terms of we'd say seeing AI maybe the community of visually impaired people were looking for a specific technology to be able to help them read a book or read a handwritten note. Yeah, exactly. So find in those little areas where they were struggling with, definitely. You could also do observation. So it literally would be, if you're coming up with a solution, observing behaviors of people or of things or of the environment itself and allowing that information to inform the next stage in your process. So there's a lot of ways of doing the empathy stage, but what's really crucial is that you don't skip it and you don't go straight to the point of this problem that you really do take the time to understand it okay that's so so important when that's done what we can do is then define the problem now we want to give you a little bit of a hand with this one and there's something that we often look at in dream space called the root cause tree which we think could be useful for you when you're trying to define your specific problem that you think you can solve maybe with your micro bit all right, now if you've already selected your global goal, this, is, this will help a bit. So with the global goal you've selected in mind, what you might do is in the center of the tree, the tree trunk here, you might write the one problem you think there is with that area. So for example, Neve, if it was like good health and well-being, you might write in the center of the tree, people aren't active enough. That might be a very broad problem that you feel is an issue, for example, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the one we have here, Neve, that you've put in. There's a lot of rubbish on the beach. Yeah. So just from an observation point of view, there's lots of rubbish on the beach. And um, so then that could be a problem. How would we solve that? So now will be a good time to pause, draw out a tree, just like we see here on the screen. And in the center of the tree trunk, write down the problem that you would associate with the goal of your choice. Okay, so we don't know what you're writing down, but hopefully you've uh, identified a, maybe one problem to do with that global goal. And there's probably lots of problems, but the idea here with define, if you think about that word, is that we get very specific because we have a tendency sometimes to be like, we're gonna save the world <laughs> and we're gonna think really broadly and, and we're gonna be fine with that but actually that's probably not achievable. So we wanna be realistic here. So let's really try and keep drilling down. So that's the kind of broad problem. So the next stage with your tree would be to actually say, well, what are the causes of this problem? We wanna really get into the thinking behind this. So if we look at our problem here, there's lots of rubbish at the beach. We have different kind of causes written in here, don't we Neve? Yep. So we have five different causes. So one of them will be that a lot of plastic wrappers from takeaways are left at the beach. Another one might be that bins overflow. There's numerous ones. Tourists yeah. leave litter behind them. Uh, birds mess up the bins. And finally, poor education. So we're not really good with maybe putting the right rubbish in the correct bins, or we might put something that's too big in the bin and it takes up far too much space. Yeah, exactly. And again, there could be more problems than that. But I think with this stage, what we really want you to do is to really drill down into, okay, five causes only is enough. Okay, because we're going to go deeper now with this again. So just five causes of that problem will be perfect and we'll keep going from there. Now we're not gonna pause just yet, we will give you that. But what we do wanna say is, we have one that we want you to then focus in on. So if I go back, one of ours here was bins overflow. 
So what we have done is we've just selected that one. So you can see how we're getting narrowing it down the whole time to get very, very specific about this problem we want to solve. So we've narrowed it down to one out of those five, which is bins overflow. And again, we've just brainstormed, we won't talk through it, but we've just brainstormed on how potentially we think that bins um, overflow and what the cause of that is as well. And what we might do is then when we get to ideate, think about some solutions for why bins overflow. But now will be a good time to pause and do those next two steps. So we want you to do the five main causes of the problem in the trunk of your tree and then pick one of them and drill even deeper on the causes of it. Okay, so hopefully you've gone a little bit deeper on that. So what we would do next is then we would go and we would ideate. So you can see we've hopefully you've done empathy. We haven't done that with you because that will take time, remember? We've got to define as what we should have just done. So we've really gone down to, okay, these are the real problems. This is what we think are the real problems here. The so next step will be ideate. So ideate, Neve, is when we brainstorm really, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to come up with as much solutions as possible. Like literally nothing too stupid, nothing too small. You write up as much as you can about these are the solutions that we could do. And when that's done, then you can be a bit more picky about what would actually work. So now would be a good time to pause and ideate. So brainstorm lots of solutions for the problems that you have identified. All right, so hopefully you got lots of brainstorming done there. Again, no idea too big or small. Just down on the page, myself and Neve have taken our problem, the bins overflow one. We did drill deeper into it and we've come up with a couple of solutions in our ID8 stage that we'll look at now. Um, so Neve, I might ask you, I've done three there. We might not, we won't have time to go through them all, yeah. but I might ask you just to go through you. I can see there you've written app and photo and pin code. So maybe just explain that one to us for your bins overflow solution. So I suppose what I was thinking here was the bins might be locked up as such in that they require a pin code to, in order for them to open. And what we might use is an app to take a photo of our rubbish and then if it allows us so that it's not household rubbish or not something that's too big, it'll send us the pin code and then we can type it in and we can put our rubbish in. Okay, and then it would make sure, because one of the things we did say was maybe the wrong bins were being used, like compost, recycling, different things. So that might ensure people use the right bin for the right stuff, because the app might identify it. Because I think sometimes we were saying they're poor education. Sometimes people just genuinely don't know if this was recycling or not. So that might, yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. when they're scanning their items, it might be able to tell them if it's compostable or whatever. Yeah, deadly. Uh, the one I had there, like there was a few, but the one I was kind of, the one I would lean towards myself was the idea that there could be like a sensor maybe at the top of the bin. And what it could do is it would identify, obviously it will pick up maybe with a little camera if the bin was full or not, or even just with um, some sort of way of seeing like that it hits a certain point. Um, and then it could maybe send a message. I know with the microbit, obviously it can send messages, but I'm sure there's lots of devices that can do that. So it would nearly send a message to the council or whatever to say, this bin is full, you need to come and empty it. Um, because maybe they're just on timetables and rotas and they don't yeah. realize that the bin is actually full and um, so that was the one I was thinking of but the whole point there is it really just allows us to kind of ground ourselves and really think of lots of possibilities and then like I said I would lean towards the sensor Neve would lean towards the app so the idea there is that you'd be really happy with one of those solutions or maybe you could combine a couple but remember don't kind of challenge yourself too much in that you're kind of going to make it unrealistic you want this to be something that you can definitely develop out using the micro bit using the code and all the skills that we've looked at there uh, but that you're actually enthusiastic about it and that you're happy with it so i would definitely be happy to look into my sensor idea i know for sure so after ID8 and Eve, we might go back and look at the different options we have next. So ID8, when ID8 is done and you've done all your brainstorming, we can see that the next stage is prototype. And we can probably talk about proto and 
prototype and test kind of hand in hand, to be honest. Yeah. Because after ID8, prototype would be for me that I would go off and I would start to try and build out this sensor, roughly speaking. It doesn't have to be perfect first time round. Even if you tried to get it perfect first time round, it's probably <laughs> not going to be. Until you test it and you see how it works, does it work, how do people interact with it, what are the issues, um, it's not going to be perfect anyway. So prototype will be getting a rough solution ready. Um, and then testing it, obviously, is you maybe testing your code, seeing does it work, putting it, if you have the physical microbit, maybe putting it in the environment where you want to test it. I saw a really interesting one recently, actually, where someone came up with a solution, but it involved the microbit being outside. And when they went to test it, it was working fine until it rained. <laughs> okay, so they didn't think through the fact that it could start lashing rain and this wouldn't react so well with the rain and the electronics and everything set up around it. So it's important to kind of consider all these things, but they didn't see that till they tested it. So that's the whole point. And like we said at the start, that's a cycle. So we're going to go back and forth, prototype test, prototype test. You might even come back and redefine your problem at another point. Um, and that's all perfect. But we're hoping that this is a good solution for you. So now will be a good time to pause and even roughly write down what you think a prototype could be for one of the ideas that you brainstormed. So hopefully you've got a rough prototype idea written down. Obviously a prototype is a physical thing that you'll have to go off and do. But across all those stages now, you might have the bones of some ideas to design your own solution. Now let's recap over everything and make sure we've covered what we wanted today. Great. So today's episode focused on us recapping on the extension challenge from the previous episode. We then discussed all of the things that we covered in the last five episodes. Which there was uh, lots of, so we had all so the coding, much. all the micro bit stuff, and again, that should be really, really uh, useful when you're now designing your solutions. Exactly, and finally, we looked at and learned about the steps involved in design thinking. Yeah, brilliant. So all of that is for a purpose, okay? We have talked about this idea that by the end of the few episodes, you would have the ability to go off and come up with your own solution. And we have specifically over the last six episodes been talking about technology and it being used for good purposes. We've talked about AI for good, but we've also looked at the micro bit and how it can be used for good with our global goals. Remember, there's two global goals if you do want to enter the Do Your Bit Challenge that the focus should be on, which is what we've looked at today. So if you are going to enter, you can be age eight to age 18, Go to the Microbit Do Your Bit website and enter the competition there. Best of luck with everything. Thank you for joining us over the last six episodes. Myself and Eva have really enjoyed them. We hope you've enjoyed them too. Chat to you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye.